Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Grace and peace. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church here on Washington Street in Cumberland, Maryland. I am Sharon Kazeri, your liturgist this morning, and leading our service is our pastor, Allison Peters. Our director of music ministries is Judy Brown, who is directing our sanctuary choir and a very impressive group of guest musicians. Here at First Presbyterian Church, we strive to be the church to bring food to the hungry, water to the thirsty, and love to the lonely. We are all part of the work that God is doing in the world, and you are invited to join us, both here and online. We begin with worship and are glad to share it together. We are all welcome here, so let us worship God. Thank mm-hmm. you. or spirit for the call to worship. We gather this Easter morning knowing we are broken. We know we are seen. We gather this Easter morning knowing we need forgiveness. We know we are heard. We gather this Easter morning knowing our hearts long for God. We know we are loved. We gather this Easter morning knowing God calls us all. We come as we are. Let us pray together. Holy One, the good news beckons to us on this Easter morning. 
allow our hearts to be filled with the joy of your resurrection so that we can share the good news with all who will listen. Give us bold vision as we celebrate together and carry your promise with us. We pray all this through our risen Lord. Amen. Our first hymn is 232, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. because we serve a God who is holy and a God who helps us to change, to repent from our past, 
and to turn toward new life. Knowing this, let us come before God with our prayer of confession printed in the bulletin. Holy God, we have journeyed together, praying, feasting, and grieving by the cross. We thank you as we gather in joy this Easter morning. Like Mary Magdalene, we often fail to see when the risen Christ stands before us. We ask that you open our eyes to your presence in our midst. Like the disciples running to the tomb, we often fail to believe what you have revealed to us. Give us wisdom to understand the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. We rejoice this Easter morning, celebrating Jesus' triumph over the grave. We rejoice that the stone was rolled away, granting us everlasting life in Christ. Help us choose the path that leads to resurrection. Amen. Friends, the tomb is empty. Hope is alive. All of our sins have been forgiven by our loving God who calls us all to rejoice together. Thanks be to God. I would invite all of our children to come forward in front of the communion table. Come on up. Some room over here, there's some room over here. Happy Easter, everyone. I have a question. Some of you may have been looking around here and find something a little odd this morning. Has anyone found something that they were not expecting to find this morning? Yes? Yeah? What do we find? The cross. Okay. Yeah. We want the cross is not always in here. Yeah. What else do we find? What did you find? I found little God figurine. You found a little Jesus figurine. Has anyone else found a little Jesus figurine somewhere? Okay. All right. Oh my goodness! There's one right there. You know what? Why don't we see if everyone can find a little Jesus for themselves? And then I'll, when everyone has a Jesus in their hand, we'll talk a little more. So, we're, come on, feel free. The sanctuary is freedom. Find, I think, I think he's in different places. Yep. He's hanging out around. Does anyone need one still? I think there's a little Jesus right here. Don't worry, there's plenty around. You want this? Oh, you want two Jesuses. I like it. Is 
Does anyone still need a Jesus? I see one in the corner over there. Some on window stills. Does anyone need one? Adults too, you can have one. Getting another one? Yes. There you go. <laughs> All right. So this is just a silly little Jesus figurine, right? But today we're going to hear the Easter story about Jesus who was killed and put in a big tomb, and all of his friends were really, really sad. They were so sad because he was gone, and he was no longer going to be with them. And then on Easter morning, they went to the tomb, hoping to find him in the tomb. And he wasn't in the tomb. He was standing outside the tomb. And Mary found Jesus in a place she didn't expect to find him. And so what I want you to remember is everyone's welcome to take. Adults, feel free. They're all over. And I have more if we need them. To take Jesus with you. Because the good news of Easter morning is that Jesus isn't just in the tomb all, all alone by himself. He comes out and he gets to be with us all the time. So that's the good news of Easter is that Jesus is always with us. Little Jesus is a reminder. So I encourage you to take little Jesus home. He can hang out in the house. Find a good place for him. He can travel with you. It's a good backpack buddy. Jesus is a good friend to have and is always with us. Will you bow your head with me and repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus. Help us to stay with him. Always. Always. Amen. Amen. All right. If anyone needs a little Jesus, adults do. If anyone needs one, I have more. You need one? Here we go. You want a little Jesus? Okay. Yep. So thanks for coming forward and happy Easter. I know some of you are in the nursery and some of you are sitting with your parents. So um, part of the joy of being community is that we get to celebrate being together, finding Jesus together. And um, so let us celebrate that by passing the peace of Christ to one another on this Easter morning. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy in the spirit of celebration what you say to us today. Amen. This morning, the first lesson is from Isaiah 25, 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. 
and he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the covering that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, See, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Holy wisdom, holy word.
Our story of the resurrection comes to us from the Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Let us listen for a word from the Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. <clears throat> but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Holy surprise, help us to know the truth of your promises that we see in the death and resurrection of our Lord. And to that end, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. During the season of Lent, we were working our way through a book that was called A Time to Grow. For each of the weeks, we would look at lessons in gardening and hospitality that went with different scriptures throughout the season. The author of that book was constantly challenging us to think about how we get our food, to look back and think about our memories that we have around food, and also to think about how we can be the best stewards of the earth that we have been given through how we source our food and things like that. Well, we have made it through Lent, and we've even made it through Holy Week. And we're at the big one. The big day. This day actually means more than any other day in our tradition. It's the day when we celebrate that God has triumphed over evil. How God knew the entire fullness of the human experience even 
death. And how God has transformed death into something new. I really love this text in the Gospel of John because it is so descriptive. It has some good characters. There are so many layers to it. We have Mary Magdalene who begins with confusion and frustration. And at the end of the scripture, she has an intimate encounter with the risen Lord and is the first disciple to share the good news. There are the disciples who are kind of jockeying for position, much like they did many other times in the Gospels. There are angelic encounters. But most of all, it shows the revelation of Jesus breaking through barriers. The reality that death cannot hold God. It is such an important story for all of us as people of faith to hear the good news that the tomb that holds all that darkness and all of that death, it's empty. The tomb that contains fear and discouragement, abuse and violence, memories, what ifs, that tomb is empty and transforms into possibility and newness. The beauty of this Easter story is that the message is still the same as it was in the beginning. We have seen the Lord. The story continues through us. Now, I'm not saying that there is no darkness, because there are a lot of dark places in this world. We have a world of wars and violence and hatred that is oppressing and burying people on a daily basis. We have a world in which there are interpersonal abuses and violence happening without anyone really paying attention to it. We have a world where even sometimes our own minds want to trap us in cycles of anxiety, depression, scarcity, frustration. These tombs are still very, very real. And sometimes we want to spend our time there, thinking on those things. And it can get a lot of our attention. But the power we find in this resurrection story is that the risen Lord, the one who can break through the dark tombs, is no longer in the tomb himself. He instead stands outside of it in a different direction, calling our name and beckoning us to follow and to find ways that lead to life instead of death. When these disciples experience the risen Lord in the days to come, Jesus goes to many places where they already are. And often, there is a table present. He goes to an upper room while they are dining together. He meets them on a beach and cooks up a delicious fish breakfast. So I think one of the ways in which we can all choose life is by sharing in the feast of being Christ's disciples. It's finding places of abundance when the world wants us to think that there is not enough. There's not going to be enough. But Christ says, yes, there's room. Lucky for me, I've had a lot of experience with this whole abundance thing. I grew up in a family that did many big meals together. Those who were here on Thursday evening heard me talk about the family dining room table that we'd pull out and put in the leaves to extend the table wide enough for everyone to have a place. The resurrection calls us to an extended table with a feast that is big enough for everyone who wants a bite. But I had one more thing going for me growing up. My mother is an excellent cook and always wanted to make sure that there was enough delicious food to share. That means that after our family meals, every single family unit left our house, but not empty-handed. 
There would be leftovers and sweets and whatever else my mom had made. They were full from eating together at the table, but they were able to take a little bit for later. I think that that might be how we want to remember this resurrection story. There is so much beauty and we're so full on this Easter morning. The love is so profound and there's such triumph. But there's still more to discover. So in the spirit of no one leaving empty-handed today, I have prepared some little snacks for you to take when you leave the sanctuary this morning. It's nothing special. It's just my mom's homemade chocolate chip recipe and some Rice Krispies, M&Ms, pretzels, maybe an apple. A little something for you to take with you so that you know that the fullness of this day, the exciting of Easter, doesn't have to end. That there is always plenty to share. That the good news continues to bring us nourishment as we make our way through this world as we breathe new life into the places where things appear to be fading. And I think more importantly than anything else, it helps us to keep our energy up for the wonderful work that God is calling us to do. Taste and see that the Lord is good and God's love endures forever. Hallelujah. Amen. As we celebrate Christ's resurrection, our gifts come from our hearts and from our abundance. And we present our offerings today, this morning. Please be encouraged to also give of yourselves by joining a church committee. And I add, we have many committees in our church, and you will enjoy the satisfaction of service but you also probably find some happy fellowship in participating. We speak to any of the elders or the people in the back of our bulletin on Sundays and they'd be happy to have you join. If you wish to request a prayer, please fill out the orange card and put it in the plate. Our offering will now be received.
Holy God, with wonder and with gratitude, we present our gifts on this day of love's triumph, including the gift of ourselves. As Christ offered himself in fearless surrender, we offer ourselves for your kingdom. And we give these gifts for your purposes so that they can be used to bring your light and love and joy to this world. Through Christ, amen. amen. Please be seated. As a community in prayer this morning, we, we give thanks uh, for healing and for uh, recovery after surgery. We pray for John, who is struggling with constant pain. And we lift up Rini and family um, on the death of Jason this morning and uh, pray for them in their grief. Let us come before God in prayer. Risen Lord, bringer of hope to those who despair and bearer of good news to those who will listen and learn. We come into your presence ready to listen and needing your grace and the love that Easter holds. Meet us in these moments. Some of us have come with troubled hearts, even as Mary came to an empty tomb. Some of us come bearing emotional burdens that weigh us down more heavily, heavily than we are willing to admit or let anyone else see. Some of us bear disappointment and stress, family pressures, financial fears, anxiety, and so much more. Risen Lord, take our troubled hearts this day and begin to mend them. Let all of us who are under heavy loads know that we do not bear them alone. Today, Lord, we also have sitting with us those who are lonely, those who are here looking for more than just answers, those who are looking for more than fellowship. Teach us how we can be with one another. Teach us how valuable and precious life is. Teach us how valuable we are to one another. Give us compassion and take us out of any tombs we have built for ourselves. Grant us the grace to find Jesus in the eyes of the lonely, the forgotten, the homeless and the helpless. Let your compassion and presence meet us even now. Mindful of our own limited time, we pray for those we love who are facing illness. We pray for those who are facing surgery. Give them strength for the journey. Help us to walk with those we are asked to walk with. And God, we are so grateful for the joy that we find in this world, for the things that we get to celebrate together. So we bring our hearts in some celebration. Help us to find joy in service, to find joy in love, to find your Easter gladness. Help us to never leave the empty tomb of Christ without an eye for all of those around us and a willingness to become a blessing. For we pray all of this in the name of the one who goes to prepare a place for us and calls us to follow, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
anyone that would like to sing the Hallelujah Chorus, we have some books up here. If you are a singer and want to join with the choir for that as our postlude today, um, come up while the choir is singing um, their Amen. But you get to participate in the benediction today. So let us join in that. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The grave is empty. May the, the God of peace who raised Jesus from the dead provide us with every good thing we need. And the blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.